this week I didn't I didn't put slides together because this is stuff very much just for this group and it doesn't really fit into the general repo because this is what has happened since we started reading the book and some of the other cohorts um this stuff you know was already there when they read it so it wouldn't really make sense to be a separate um slide deck i don't think but i went through the github repo and kind of uh sorted out what was different um between like the day that we um presented that chapter or around that day and today um so that's what this is i just opened up the sections of the book and i have the links in the channel um and we can kind of just talk about you know what did we miss what 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 might we not have noticed so the first thing um i mean and there are lots of like little you know typos and slight wording changes and things like that i didn't include those these are where they like added an entire section or you know a new package came out things like that all right so the first thing is in chapter three they have a new section specifically about the tidy models meta package um which we all you know we know about we've used it like they use it throughout their code uh but they they realized they never really explained what it is and what what it does so that's what this section is all about um and importantly what they point out is they have this um where is it tidy models prefer is actually exported from the tidy models package when you run that um it uses the package conflicted and it tells conflicted hey i want for example dplyr filter not base filter because of course is that technically stats whatever it is the yeah stats filter no one wants stats filter they want dplyr filter most of the time and you can call it out if you want stats filter so it tells conflicted that's what you mean when you say filter um all of this like as we've seen in other uh other book clubs i do almost all of my coding as packages so i don't use conflicted i use um full uh namespace uh for pretty much anything i write i'm just used to doing that but um for like normal people who code like like people are or like everyone else uses R, uh, Tidy Models Prefer is pretty nice. The one caveat that they have is that once you start, um, now Conflicted will be, um, like it'll be set up to run. And so if you have other things where you were just using the last one that you libraried, Conflicted, what Conflicted does is it turns that into an error. It makes you specifically tell it which version of the function you actually meant. Um, which is great. It's good practice and it helps you like avoid uh, 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 reproducibility issues. But if you just, you know, don't run tidy models prefer when you have something that you're about to like wrap up and you've got a deadline or whatever, um, it'll probably cause problems. But I, I do think it's a cool thing to use does anyone has has anyone worked with conflicted i actually haven't because of the, my coding style um but i really like the idea of it it's 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 funny it's a um a hadley package to basically make r pickier it's like hey r just lets you do this thing and it can cause like it often causes confusion um we've had a number of questions on r for ds that basically amount to, oh, I, I libraried the packages in the wrong order, and that's why it didn't work. Um, so he made this package that basically doesn't let you do that anymore. It makes you specify, you know, which version of that function did you actually mean? Uh, one of these days, I want to dig into it because it's uh, interesting metaprogramming to kind of pay attention to what what could you have meant. Um, but yeah, so tidy models prefer. That's in chapter three. And then I, I know, um, this sentence <laughs> about the tidy models meta package was the other addition to the chapter because it has to also go in the summary. All right, and then there was nothing significant in four or five. Again, there were a bunch of um, wording changes and typos. And so it's, you know, you, oh, actually, um, I'll try to pull that up if I can find it. That uh, basically the way to, uh, 
to see this is you you put um, slash compare at the end of a repo, and then you put you can get the tag of a particular um, GitHub like commit, and then you put dot dot, and you and in the case of TM with or TMWR, it's uh, master but whatever the name of the ma the main branch, so commit number commit ID dot dot main, and it'll show you the difference between those. Um, and so I just went and found one, basically I would find the commit that was before whatever day we did the book club and then compare, look at the, the files. For the most part, they had like a break over Christmas. And so mostly I just um, was comparing the current version to what it was in November. And then I could say, oh no, that was there. But um, some of them, it was, there was enough change that I was like, okay, I want to see exactly what changed in the time frame we were looking at. So that was nice to be able to do. All right, um, in the uh, recipes chapter, the main thing that changed, and then this change is reflected in every chapter after this one, is they added this function or these functions. Um, it used to always, like all the code used all nominal, and now all the code uses all nominal predictors because that will not um, take your outcome variables and demify it. And this was a, a thing that they had um, like t questions all the time. They would do workshops. It would screw up everyone's code that they would do step dummy all nominal. And you have to like explicitly tell it, oh wait, no, no, no. The predictors don't dummy my outcome variables. And so they added these functions. Um, there's also all numeric predictors, but I think it that one causes less problems. Um, I mean, it depends what you're doing, but uh, so that's the main thing. But this one, uh, every chapter, like I'm sure we have seen it in some of the recent chapters, they probably used code that referred to that. Um, and it was it was interesting to go back and read the thread. Uh, I should have opened it up here, but they, uh, there was an issue that um, I think Julia reported of, hey, people complain about this all the time. How can we fix this? And um, I don't know how to say her name, Miley, M Mile. Uh, from our studio and she's a, uh, uh, or she does a lot of talks and she's a prof um, and she's active on Twitter, but I, I will pull her name up and put it into the notes because uh, she suggested, hey, could you just like put predictors onto and like make a function that's basically a wrapper function. And um, it was cool to see kind of the, how that coalesced. Um, so yeah, that's all that was there, but it's, uh, super useful if you have some code that like, you know, you're running through a recipe and all of a sudden your outcome variables don't make any sense anymore. This could be why. Apparently it's a very common uh, issue. Any thoughts on that? Anyone have it? I mean, it's pretty straightforward, but. Yeah. Even with something like that, like the naming can get kind of get hard, right? You could have named it all numeric variables or features or <laughs> yes. of predictors. So that's, yeah, uh, that so. I think it was, well, uh, yeah, like she recommended preds, but they're very big on autocomplete in tidy models. That's kind of part of their rules of make the, make the names descriptive and just count on the fact that most people are using our studio and can hit tab, um, which I agree with all of our packages at work. We have, you know, very long function names kind of like this because you want it to be as descriptive as it can be. Um, and then that goes with the fact that throughout recipes, they, everything else, like they have an all predictors function. So this was just kind of putting together all nominal and all predictors and there's all outcomes. Um, so using their vac vocabulary to work together. Um, and like I said, this is like, anytime there's a step dummy, they use this. Um, and I think in their basic, like, Ames setup code that they have in almost every chapter, um, it uses this function. So we've probably seen it. By the way, this is one of those things that when I saw it uh, as, like, part of the dev branch, like, I immediately just downloaded the, the dev package and you're like, no, I, I need this right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was one of those things you could work around it, but it was, like, a pain. And... Uh, it just, it was like, oh, yeah, that's so much clearer, so. I've definitely spent, you know, 
at least an hour, just not understanding why <laughs> the whole pipeline was breaking. Yep. All right. So that was it in six. I mean, again, like all of six, you know, if I do, I, um, yeah, <laughs> like it, it keeps going throughout the code. Um, so 11 times there's that underscore predictors. Um, and yeah, this is the code that they they reuse. And so it went into that. So therefore this, this check-in hit like almost every chapter. Um, this also, by the way, uh, I learned this cool trick where you can put the text that you're looking for into the uh, URL. So if you click the link in our channel, it goes not only directly to this page, oh, except I just broke it apparently. Ah, no, what happened? Let me find it. Um, Cause it, it goes directly to the words, not just the page. So this is chapter six, there we go. So, ooh, very cool. Um, it's interesting to see that it's like cutting off when I when I load it. But if you like look at it in um, R4DS, you can see here, let me copy the link and share in the chat. So that was just a side thing that was like, I've seen Google do that. Like when you Google words and then you click the link now, it'll go and highlight the word in. So I wanted to see how to actually make that. Um, so that's that. All right. Uh, we've seen part of this recently. We actually, um, I don't remember which chapter it was, but we went over it because it was cool. Uh, not the use models part of it, although use models is also cool, but that in Parsnip, there's this add-in where you can like choose the model that you care about. And um, they're gonna show us an example. I'm gonna let this play because, and I don't know if this is really playing over the video very well, but it, uh, it, it like generates setup code for you of the common things that you're gonna want for that model. And then use models is even more that, you know, they they say, okay, library use models. Um, and this is modeled on uh, the use this package, which is uh, one of my favorite packages for any like development work in R and actually a lot of things outside of development is it just kind of, it's scaffolding for using R. And this is scaffolding for using tidy models where you can say use XG boost and you give it a formula and you say the data. Um, in this case, they didn't want to tune, but if you want to tune, you say that you want to, and you say, do you want comments, basically? Verbose equals true means put comments in the code. And then it just generates this. So it's not um, like, it's not necessarily everything you need, but it's the minimum of what you need. And so you can just set up, okay, now I'm going to model and I'm going to maybe tweak from here, but you don't have to start from nothing. Um, I like that quite a lot. And so it goes all the way through the workflow. It sets up your recipe, sets up your model specification, and then it creates the workflow out of those. Um, that's that's really cool. So I'm definitely, when I saw them talk about use models on Twitter, um, I was like, oh, I got to look into that. And then I never actually did. And so it's cool to see uh, kind of how straightforward it is. Um, like all of this, you would have had to type well, not the tune equals whatever in the verbose, but you don't have to type those. I think those are the default values anyway. Um, and so, you know, you would have had to put a formula and the data in your setup anyway. And now this is just, here you go, it's all done. Um, so yeah, has anyone worked with use models yet? It's relative, I mean, I think it's actually really new. I was gonna say it's relatively new, but within the last couple of months. I, I mean, I tried it out. Okay. Uh, you can always like look at the documentation too. <laughs> yeah. It's just whatever your preference is, I think. You can, but I, I like that it just um, pre-fills that, that, you know, you do the basics and then it's, here is my code to, that I can then edit, but it's got, a, got it all kind of nicely set up. Um, <laughs> I will say actually, does it do, it does his weird arrow style, doesn't it? because then I would have to immediately delete that extra line there. Yeah, I was um, going to ask you who decides that. Because I actually like that. That's my style, but I know no. not everyone does that. So, I've uh, actually started using that recently. 
I, saw it's, the book. It, I mean, honestly, it is probably easier to follow, but it it's weird. And it's, I don't know. I don't know if are I can Are we going to have to fight about this? I, I don't know. I mean, it's better than having the, the sign on the right at the bottom. Yes. I did that for like five minutes and couldn't stand uh, it. Uh, I mean, I also know, I understand the arguments for that too. And especially if you just do the right assign arrow, but then the next line kind of like this, put the thing you're assigning to. I understand all these arguments and they're not, uh, I mean, it's one of the strengths and weaknesses of R is that like st style things are not enforced at all. Um, and so you can do, you can do what makes sense to you. Um, actually, I think, now that I say that, I think I did use use models once, and it set everything up weird, and then I didn't come back to it because I had other stuff I was working on. Uh, so I haven't looked into whether I can change the formatting or maybe just embrace it and get used to it. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I like the I like the idea because it's the stuff that is completely repetitive. Just take it out. Don't don't make people do repetitive things because that's where you can make a mistake that is stupid. Like, oops, I, I left off one pipe and my code is confusing. And, and what do you mean uh, all nominal doesn't exist or whatever, you know? And so those those types of errors can be annoying. Um, yeah, so that was, I think that's it in chapter seven. And again, so they talk about the add-in and the use models. And then I think, actually, I'm not even sure that they mention it in... Um, uh, in the summary. So just that added section. So that's pretty cool. And then eight is the last one that has changes and it has two changes. Um, I don't remember what was here, if anything, when we read chapter eight, I should have, um, well, he had lots of stuff about add formula. So he would take off, he would uh, cut off the workflow and or remove the recipe rather and add a formula but the add variables works a little bit more different because um, he talks about that you can then you add your variable add variables you say what the outcome outcome is and then once the outcome is set you know you could say like predictors is everything and it knows well not the outcome and so it'll like um it's again, I don't know, just like a shorthand. Um, so yeah, there's that add variables function. Um, <laughs> all that said, this is for adding it to a workflow. I'd rather probably um, exactly specify the recipe, but the point of this is that it, if you want to use kind of the, the minimum that a given model needs, it will do that. Um, and so if a model... Um, think he said it will do um yeah there you go it's if you want it to do what he would normally do uh that's the interface but it doesn't um it doesn't do things like that you have to um make indicator variables for xg boost or your glimnet and so it won't do that so you have have to do it and therefore you should use a recipe in that case um, or a formula. All right. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know. That one was, it exists. I don't know that I will ever actually use add variables, but it's nice to know the function exists. Any thoughts on that before we move on? Probably. All right. And then is the introduction of workflow sets, which we kind of did this section, but if you're um, working with workflow sets, the main thing I would say with this is, you know, we had a little in mini introduction to them. Chapter eight is what you want to jump back to if you are starting to work with workflow sets and want to understand how they work. Um, it's just where he does the, uh, like the, the setup, like how to create a workflow set, not necessarily how to use them, but how to create them. So set up all your, um, your models, um, and your, well, okay, yeah, he does the preprocessor and then he does a couple of, or just one model and he shows the combination. Um, I don't remember if in, yeah, he doesn't even in here show um, a real like combo where the preprocessor and models um, 
are different <laughs> or you know two different lists but um it does all that so that's that's the thing in workflow sets and then the other thing that changed in this chapter was um <laughs> the future plans mentioned workflow sets so they don't mention that anymore um but they do talk about that they have um uh, uh operations after the model fit are pro are coming to um uh workflows um might be interesting to talk to him next week about uh what, you know is this a section that's going to go away basically when he says you know here are our future plans is that future as in in the next month or two or oh it'll be way after this book is published um and that i don't i don't know the answer to do you have a comment jim or tony there is need that go ahead jim. <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. We 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 uh, tidy models needs that mm -hmm. for, for for GLM. Yes, um, I have had cases as well where, I mean, you know, I end up writing the thing outside of the workflow, but it's nice for the workflow to just do everything. Yeah. Um, do you have something, Tony? Yeah, I was going to ask about something like calibration or for the cutoff for like classification. Exactly. Like is, is there anything that currently does that? Or is that do, do some packages like have functionality for that already? I don't know if I've seen that before in a package. I want to say that there's an extended one of the extended tidy models. Um, I don't know, like tidy info or something. Oops. Um, there's like probably or something. Um. Uh, that was applicable. Um, I I don't know. Nothing that I know of. Um, yeah, yeah. There you go. Tools for post processing class probability estimates. Um, I think yeah. This one is nowhere. N oh, it is. Is it on current? Maybe it was a. It's yeah, such, such a simple. Concept. So I think, yeah, um, yeah. Um, one of the things in here. Let's see if they talk about it. Um, that you you can set up um, a new class that where um, it. I'm trying to remember exactly how it works, but it's it, it includes kind of its um its its certainty in in the um, classification. And so I thought that was, that's nice, but I would very much like uh, some of this post-processing to kind of ch help choose cutoffs. Um, but yeah, they've had this uh, for about a year. That does some of it at least. I don't know if that's, you know, that kind of, um, but it, I, I guess it's not uh, integrated into workflows would be the main thing. All right, and that's it. That's all the things that have changed. Um, I just wanted to kind of to kind of evaluate that so we know what we've missed. Um, well, I mean, I guess the other thing that has changed is uh, there's a PR for Chapter 16. It's not there. Um, so that will probably be coming soon. Um, but. Uh, I, you know, it's still just PR. They, it, um, he is making new check-ins on it, or new commits, um, and Julia hasn't reviewed it yet. So we aren't going to do that chapter yet. But there's there's progress there. So this is um this is, or sorry, it's not even sixteen. That's right, it's nineteen. It's because these last four or five chapters that have titles, um they aren't necessarily like the order doesn't matter a lot um so if we look at these um coding cate categorical data dimensionality reduction explaining models and prediction predictions when should you trust mo predictions ensemble models and inferential analysis like they're all kind of standalone um 
And so, yeah, 19 happens to be the one that he is currently working on. I know Julia is working on something. I don't know exactly what. Um, so it'll be interesting to see as those come in. I think probably for this club, as they are published as actual chapters in the book, we will probably do them, whatever order that happens to be. Um, and it might mean just a you know sporadic, hey, is everyone available? Let's do this. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. And then the you know I think I well I mentioned it before everyone got on that the other thing and it's on the um, Slack is next week. Uh, Max and Julia have agreed to join us and answer questions. Um, and possibly have us answer questions for for them because the whole you know the reason that they're so uh, eager to kind of to talk to us is they are in the middle of writing a book and so anything we can tell them about it about our experience is helpful um but i will be posting a um a google form to submit questions it's not, you don't have to it's just easier um you don't have to remember the question that way and i can kind of group questions because a lot of times a lot of people have similar questions so i'll post that in this uh slack tonight probably um yeah so that's that's this week it's good to see everyone does anyone have any other thoughts comments concerns oh hey tan showed up <laughs> how did uh we the uh the book club how did we change you know we're talking about oh. changes in the book how do we change you know these are the important questions <laughs> it is this is a weird one because like we're not officially we're not done we just like the book's done or the book's not done so therefore we're we're waiting um it has been funny that we've been reading this book for me it's been funny the timing of this because i am um working on a project that is using types of models that are not in tidy models and i haven't touched tidy models the entire time we've read the book except for like personal playing around with things um but i'm ready when i get back to some other stuff that i have to work on now i understand uh things to go with it pretty well so anyone else uh, i mean ironically i feel like i was worth using it for a couple things, like when we started out the book club, I haven't really touched it in the past maybe two months, um, except for reading this book. So now I feel like I can go back a little bit and um, fix, I don't know, not fix, but maybe change how I was doing, especially with the workflow sets. I think that's a big thing. Uh, yeah. I might, I might change. Yeah, I guess, you know, some of it is the underlying, the possible code has changed while we've been reading the book. <laughs> Um, I feel like I definitely feel like I understand uh, kind of the philosophy behind everything a lot better than when we started like oh, okay I see like why everything's separated and I see um, where how they stitch together I, I think it is interesting that they made intentionally made you know these very modular packages and then they make workflows and workflow sets to like put them back together um i think it's interesting yeah Connor? it's almost yeah. it's almost getting to, to the same sort of a similar spot that carrot was at but much more like i, I guess modular is the best word when i really appreciate the modularity because there are things for example that you need while training and while tuning that you wouldn't need to deploy. And so having it in different pieces, that's nice that the actual deployment piece, I mean, they don't have, you know, they, they've talked about that that's a future uh, set of packages, but you don't have to deploy tune, you know? Um, you don't have to deploy dials. Like that's uh, in the model, but it's not it's not needed in order to to use the model. I think things like that are pretty interesting. Yeah, I, I can't wait to go back to my house price code and <laughs> fix, fix like one all the like syntax changes that have happened in the last like two months, but also like all the like 
just bad modeling practice I used <laughs> first time around. Awesome. <laughs> and yes, the changes were the friends we made all along. <laughs> Thank you, Asma. My my, uh, my question is like, how do they know when to stop writing this book? Like now they're just going to mm. other topics. You're like, like they could just write about other things forever. Like let's have a ton of case studies now. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm not sure. I I think these are the end. These last uh, six chapters. Um, because yeah, they could keep going, but you know he has his feature engineering book. Um, she does case studies in the form of her videos every uh every once in a while um and blogs so um it would actually i don't know that could be interesting but maybe they'll do a different book of like um like they can't call it recipes like people call other books of that style because it would be like tidy models recipes no not that recipes not the package the recipes for tidy models um you find he's conflicted there yeah <laughs> so then they have to make a case studies package to make it even more confusing. So, how about you, Jim? You looked like you wanted to say something. No, no, no. I'm, 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 I'm satisfied. This, this <laughs> has been a good exercise. Oh, good. And yes, cookbook. Of course. Thank you, Tan. Yeah. That is the actual word they use. So, um, but still, it feels. I mean, I guess. Yeah. Um, he he. He backed off on the whole cook cooking analogy. Like he has his parsnip, um, and he has recipes, but uh, you know it's a workflow. It's not a, I don't know, a a line kitchen line or whatever he might have called it. Um, it's for the so. best. <laughs> yes, I totally agree that it's for the best. I think uh, some of the recipes stuff got a little confusing, but cool. All right. Well, I don't have anything else. So if no one has anything else, we can talk uh, again next week, normal time. And then, and we'll talk on the Slack. Um, if he, you know, if chapter 19 gets deployed, then we'll do that in two weeks. Um, but I kind of expect that we won't. And uh, there are a zillion things I'm working on. So I'm fine with having a break here and there. Um, so uh, what's what's up with book clubs like you know having times in the morning? I can't go to other book clubs if they're like nine a.m. in the morning or Central Time. Uh, yeah, uh, if you're talking about specifically the practical statistics for data scientists book club, um, we're doing that for work. Like Jonathan and I are. Uh, that's like a development goal club. So I was like, okay, people want it at nine. Cool. Now I can actually like do it on work time. Um, and a lot of people, like I think, uh, you know, a lot of people are students. Um, and that club is actually really interesting because there are people in there from like every experience level up through. Um, oh, what what the heck is his name? The uh, Notre Dame professor who was in the advanced Scott, art. Scott. Yeah, Nassim. Scott. Yeah, that Scott is a prof, and he is in that club to evaluate that book that they might be using at Notre Dame. Um, through people who are currently undergrads, people who have degrees in stats, people who, you know, certain people who had stats uh, almost 30 years ago from the ratty book that still lives on their bookshelf. Um, that it, Anyway, I like that it's all over the place like that. I think that's really interesting and it's going to be cool. Um, but yeah, the clubs are all over the place. Will, so I, I want to give it a little bit of time but if they aren't even close to keeping up with us, which is likely, we probably will convert this time slot to a different club and then jump back in from time to time. I'm not sure. I don't know what to do. We haven't done any any books that were, like we've done other books that were close to um, in development, but we haven't gotten ahead, this far ahead of anybody. So I don't know. We'll see. Um, I kind of like the idea of doing the feature engineering book, but I also like the idea of pausing a little bit um, and letting them catch up. So we'll see how things go. Yeah, I need, I'm need. i selfish. I need a book club for <laughs> Tuesdays at 
7 p.m. Central for me. I know. It has been, it's been very nice. Um, it's pretty crazy how Maya's little uh, idea has kind of become what we do at r for ds um, That is true, that we could just do like everyone, hey, everyone, let's apply. Like we'd start, we could start doing tidy models Tuesdays. Yeah, office hours, like uh, like I've been like the idea that's been thrown around for a while. Yeah, because um, there is a cool data set that comes out every Tuesday, and we meet on Tuesdays, so that could be a thing. Start yeah. doing tidy models or tidy Tuesdays, something something. Um, so yeah, uh, we've got a couple weeks. Well, we've got a week at least to decide on that. So if anyone, uh, I'll say, if anyone wants to volunteer to take a data set in two weeks and play with it i i'm all for it um as long as i don't have to do a lot of work for it uh <laughs> i i will volunteer i think osma is also volunteering uh, osma is gonna do the first one yeah, uh, I, yeah I will also volunteer your, your blog and if so that's that's awesome um and then i very much want to read something on workflow sets and stacks together because i've used them separately and I, I don't know quite hasn't clicked how to use them together so i'm excited oh, yeah. for that oh uh, yeah yeah chapter Asma, 20 <laughs> Asma and i uh, kind of i think after i did a uh, chapter 15 we like briefly like try to figure out how to do workflow sets and mm. stacks and we got it to work eventually oh, so, uh, very cool i want to see that <laughs> possible yes so okay cool in two weeks you're you're on um Wait, wait, what, me or Ozma? No, Ozma. Okay. I, I'm actually, I, I wonder, like, I feel like, no, it's, it's just you, Ozma, this time, I think. Um, I feel like we should full, fill this in as our chapter 20 notes. Like, just just anticipating that this is, oh, yeah, this is what we did for chapter 20. And then maybe we'll come back and touch on it when the chapter actually exists. <laughs> um, which could also be a fun thing. Um I don't know if anyone wants to do something about explainability. Uh, that could be something that we could do a week on. We could do um, I don't know, dimensionality reduction and coding categorical data. Any of that. If you have any ideas of what you would like to see, um, that could be a theme that you use in order to kind of explore some data. That'd be kind of funny. We'll do our. We'll do each of the chapters before they exist. Um, all right, and, but yes, they so can use week. our stuff to write the book, and we become co off. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it, that's kind of complicated because we've been using their stuff. But <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, next week, uh, talk to the authors. I'll I'll put a form up to do some questions. But again, just feel free to show up with questions. Just know that I won't necessarily see them. Um, if we, if we have, like I think last time it was twenty people or something. It wasn't insane, but if it's insane, it's hard to have everyone talking um so there will be a form um that should do it and then two weeks we'll learn about uh chapter 20 ensemble models without chapter 20 existing cool all, all right. right sounds good see you then yeah thanks john bye talk to you later